Welcome everyone. My name is Mutant XP alongside Haas TX and welcome to the world premiere sort of <laughs> sort of of the uh, run it back show circa 1992. So for those of you who are wondering uh, what this show is about uh, basically uh, what myself and Haas uh, will be doing uh, every other week is uh, talking about a specific month in uh, 1992. Uh, and so this is a podcast on the 90s. And uh, Haas and I came up with this idea where we could, uh, every season we would cover a different year. Uh, and on every uh, episode, uh, we would cover a different month. And so uh, just a few more uh, bits of information about the podcast or the uh, talk show. Uh, and so, uh, we are going to be going, uh, fairly in unfairly chronological fashion, uh, going, uh, from January to, uh, December. Uh, and so, uh, but we will be bouncing around. Hopefully, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, the God's willing, right. Uh, we can, uh, we can cover more than just 1992 in the future. Uh, and so that would be every two weeks for a month, right? That would be what? Yeah, so that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Yeah. We'll have two months, yeah, two months covered per month, basically. And so some of you uh, who are new to the stream might be wondering where this uh, idea came from. And so um, so Haas and I uh, are uh, big Street Fighter fans. We have been playing casually and competitively for over 20 years. Um, we are about the same age range, uh, not... To not give any uh, too much information away, we are uh, he's in not as our as I am, but <laughs> we are in our late thirties range, uh, and so obviously <laughs> the decade uh, that was particularly formative uh, in our histories was the nineties, Haas. Absolutely. And so uh, you know, just to uh, put it out there right now, the nineties was the best decade of all time, right, Haas? Hundred percent. There's no question. There is no question. There is no question. There is no, question. There is no, question. Yeah. There is no doubt. Uh, so anyway, so where did this idea come from? So like, I think I, I can't believe it's been three years since uh, Street Fighter Anniversary came out. Yep, yeah, it's it's been that long, and yet they haven't fixed shit. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about that. In yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a different podcast. <laughs> that's a different yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, so I think three years ago, really, uh, about three years ago, uh, Street Fighter Thirtieth Anniversary Collection came out. And uh, Haas and I are, uh, well, Haas, obviously, you play uh, a lot of different games, Hyper Fighting, ST, 3S. Uh, I'm mainly a Third Strike guy. And so, you know, the thing that I was excited the most about 30th Anniversary uh, was not Third Strike, uh, because I knew they would never get the net play right, um, <laughs> and they still have it. But again, that's another topic for another podcast. Very true. Um, what I was most excited about, Haas... And maybe you could speak on this a little bit more was, you know, the fact that we were going to get a supposedly stable uh, 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 platform to play uh, hyper fighting online. And so uh, we were really yeah. excited about that because, you know, I mean, the previous ports or the previous ways to play hyper fighting online have been pretty bad, right? Yeah, uh, in general, a lot of people are using uh, GG, or FIK in general is using GPO to run CPS1. And generally, CPS1 does have a lot of desyncs with that version of uh, uh, FBA in particular, right? So the issue with that is that you won't even know. Sometimes it'll run well for two games and then desync on the third, right? Mm -hmm. So there was really, you could play legit maybe one game, maybe a half, or maybe one round, and then eventually you'd be screwed. So it was just, you know, that's not the proper way to play any fighting game. And it's just, it's unfortunate. So, uh, yeah, this was actually the first time outside of uh, Xbox 360, which even then that ran. I mean, it was okay for what it was, but for its time. But um, this is the first true online hyper fighting that, that actually, I feel like, ran decent, provided that there was no issues with, uh, you know, the connection between two players. And um, yeah, and there's actually a whole scene to, to to prove that actually on Xbox One, believe it or not, there's a huge hyper fighting scene on Xbox One, huge, all really really top players. But uh, that's a, that's a, that's you know, it just. Uh, a lot of people are excited about it. I mean, those guys definitely are excited about it. I'm excited as well because it's the first time we've been able to play like a, a lobby or just, without even being a lobby, just one v one would be sweet without desyncs, right? And finally, we got that, so that's that's a nice thing. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Before so, I forget to mention this idea, Haas, you should 
we should put together an Xbox One hyper fighting online tournament. Yes, I think so too. That's where all the how godlike would that be? Yeah, I mean it's crazy. The the cool thing about it is like a lot of the players that are good there. What makes them interesting is that they're the top players of their region of that of those arcades in that state. Uh-huh. So it's like they were the best at that game in their regions, right? So you're taking all the kings of the arcades and you're taking them and fighting them against each other. All the best of the best, and and the American arcades. I mean, of course, the Europeans and Japanese probably had tech that we could never even fathom. But you know, in the West Coast as well. But um, in the, any big you know New York West Coast, you guys had this tech that we didn't have at the time. But uh, you know, you guys went a little bit deeper with it than we did. But the thing is, um, it, it's it's going to be neat. I think that putting the Xbox One tournament together would bring the best players out, and uh, players that don't have it would probably go over to somebody's place and play on it. I mean, it'd be sick. Yeah. There are at least 20 solid players that are very, very good on there. Um, like top level play. Let's do it, man. And Let's do it. I think it's a good idea. Let's do it, really dude. Let's do it. Sponsored by Run it, the Run It Back show. And it's... the weird thing about it is it runs so well. I, I feel like I don't have any hitches on, on hmm. Xbox One when I'm playing uh, Hyper Fighting. I, 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 will, I will steal my Xbox. I will steal my sister in law's Xbox One from her. I will give you the money to buy it off of her if she <laughs> takes it. I mean, during this time, if she if she wants money for COVID and shit, be like, hey, here you go. <laughs> I got some COVID money for you. Give me your, uh, give me your Xbox. You know, <laughs> the struggle is that real? Hey, man, you never know. It could get to that level. You never know. I'm probably not, but yeah. so some of you might be wondering, you know, what the hell does hyper fighting have to do about a '90s podcast? And the answer is everything. Uh, again, the reason uh, why I I brought up 30th anniversary collection uh, is because you know Haas and I, you know, uh, when the game came out, uh, we were just so geeked and we were just we couldn't stop talking about hyper fighting and just you know just a fair warning throughout the podcast i guess this is kind of a fighting game players sort of perspective on the 90s we will be talking about hyper fighting a lot absolutely during yes. the show um i mean not like a lot a lot but but we it will be a regular staple and so some of you might be wondering what the hell does hyper fighting have to do with the 90s podcast and the answer is actually everything because as Haas and i were reminiscing about hyper fighting we we were we, we realized hey what when did hyper fighting come out Haas? uh 92 1992 so that's the that's the magic year december 1992 i believe yep right on the verge of 93 actually yep yep we and had, then, uh, yeah, two for a good year at least. And then Haas and I started talking about like thinking about how godlike 1992 was. Like we were just like right, Haas. Like we were just like yeah. going back and forth with just like, like, like you know, like like trading like events and things that we remember from 1992. Like so much stuff happened in that year. Yeah, and when you proposed the idea in the first place, I was like, it's, it's, I love it. I was like, I, of course I'm going to say yes. You know, what I mean, it's one of those things that like I was like, I'm glad you thought about it and mm-hmm. put it all together because i mean i was like you know i'm just lazy with that sort of shit to be honest so i'm glad that you structured all this and yeah. stuff and got it, got it together but either way it was a sick year um it was it was we talked about that stuff for a long time um uh and, and initially the name but it's, it's, speaking of hyper fighting you know the fact that we'll be talking about it the initial name of the podcast that you you, you called it turbo tuesday but uh the problem was i was not able to my, my schedule is fucked okay it's my fault that it's not turbo tuesday anymore it really is so i'll take blame for that but the thing is, that was the name. So the, if the name is called Turbo Tuesday, obviously it's going to have to do with hyper fighting, regardless of whatever. So it's uh, it's a great game. Um, it's it's very basic. A lot of people don't get it. And I understand that. I can totally see it from a different point of view. And the thing is, you just have to step in and play a little bit and then realize that it's so basic that you have to be kind of creative in a way to kind of get your way. And, it, and the thing is, there's no comeback mechanic. There's no, you know... Nothing that can bring you back out of a shit situation unless you outplay the other player significantly. So the thing is, like, that's really nice. And the fact that the character, there's broken, every character's broken, even the low tier, even the low tier characters are broken in the game. But the thing is, like, it's more balanced than any other CPS two, or CPS 1 or 2 game uh, altogether. Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Street Fighter 2 game. It's the most balanced Street Fighter 2 game out of all of them. So it's, it's you know, it's again, it's more basic. It's got some crazy bullshit chains, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it exciting, exciting you know? Um, sometimes the bullshit is what makes a game good. So, and, and, and again, you know, I I mentioned earlier that Haas and I are in a around a similar age range. Hyper fighting was the Street Fighter of my childhood. Yeah, 
It was the Street Fighter that I remember, you know, first playing. Um, I may have played Champion Edition, like, at a Shakey's <laughs> pizza Yeah, it was bar. always like a bowling alley um, or like a, yeah, yeah. It was always one of those things. I, yeah, yeah I'm with the, you on that. But the first Street Fighter I really remember really playing was Hyper Fighting. Um, and, you know, obviously Haas and I are going to be talking a little bit about our personal experiences in 1992, where we were uh, uh, during uh, those formative years. Um, but anyway, that's kind of how this podcast uh, came to be through our uh, mutual love of hyper fighting and thinking about 1992 and how godlike the year would be. And uh, so actually, this isn't the, the first time we tried to launch this podcast. <laughs> this is actually the third time. And so hopefully uh, third time no, to charge. It's, it's done. Hey, the good thing is, I mean, okay, so I hate to say this. It sounds really wrong. But the thing is, I'm forced to stay home more than normal. So I, I, either way, like I can't, like the good thing is I can actually have free time without having to worry about yeah. stuff happening in the background, you know? So it's really nice mm-hmm. to be able to enjoy my free time without having to worry about a phone call here and there, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For like work and stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, it should be just fine, especially on Fridays, not an issue whatsoever. Like, mm-hmm. it, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, again, it's my fault. Turbo Tuesday is not Turbo Tuesday anymore. So I apologize, but mm-hmm. that was definitely all me. So uh, anyhow. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, before uh, we uh, get started and actually start talking about 1992, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know uh, sort of how the show is going to uh, go. And so, uh, basically, uh, we are going to start every episode uh, by just talking about some, you know, general things we remember from 1992, uh, where we were, uh, you know, as kids and what we were doing and what we, we were into and the things that we were uh, talking about and dealing with. Uh, and then we're going to get to, uh, I guess, what we would call the, the meat of the show, Haas. And that is the, the, the wheel. The wheel is sick. Dude. The, wheel, the wheel is sick. <laughs> <laughs> the wheel is pretty sick. It is sick. So some of you might be wondering, what the hell is that wheel? Um, you know, you know, what's up with that wheel? You know, what's, what's going on with that? And so we realized pretty early on that we probably needed to introduce a little bit of structure into the podcast so that we wouldn't, uh, uh, so that we wouldn't, uh, I guess <laughs> what's, what's a good word to use us <laughs> so that we wouldn't deviate, I guess, too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Yeah. And so, uh, we came up with this idea of the wheel. It's uh we don't really have a name, maybe, uh, for those of you who are in the chat or for those of you who are watching this VOD on YouTube, perhaps you can uh, tweet us and let us know uh, what we should call the wheel. <laughs> we're looking for a, a catchy name for the wheel. And so basically what we're going to be doing for about an hour is we're going to spin the wheel. And uh, basically whatever it lands on, we're going to basically you know talk about. And so uh, here are the categories. And so we have mixtapes. And so basically, uh, if the wheel lands on mixtapes, then, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, kind of the, the music that we were listening to uh, in, in January of 1992. Um, albums that came out, songs, you know, that might have been released uh, and so forth and so on. <clears throat> then we have two thumbs up or two thumbs, not two thumbs up, but two thumbs. Uh, and that's the category for films and uh, movie releases. Uh, I know you're really excited to uh, to talk about some of the movies that you remember from January '92, Hoss. You know what? I've got I've got one in particular, but the other two, or the the third one actually is one I actually discovered while I was going through this sort of uh, this sort of wheel of death or wheel of, well, the wheel. Uh, the wheel. <laughs> I don't want to call it the wheel of death, but the, 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 I was looking at Highway to Hell. Was, well, anyways, yes. but yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be exciting. I, I got I had a couple things to say about those movies yeah. for sure. Uh, another category is game pros, and so one of the one of the one of the one of my fondest memories growing up in the '90s, Haas, was sifting through uh, gaming magazines like Game Pro and Electronic Gaming Monthly. Hundred um, uh, percent. I didn't have too many Nintendo powers, but uh, uh, and, and, oh, and something that we never really talked about, Haas. But what about those import Japanese gaming magazines? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, they were like, gosh. they were. Oh my god, they were like half the. Okay, they had the better art. They had the better like, just the quality was so much better than everything else. Yeah, uh, really was. I mean, not. I'm not saying that EGM and stuff wasn't. I'm just saying that like they. It was easier to look at the Japanese magazines, I think, yeah. for gaming, even though you couldn't see, understand anything at all. But. And so, if the wheel lands on Game Pros, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at the January 1992 
issue of GamePro and uh, point out some of the things that uh, we think are uh, of, 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 of note, Haas. Uh, and so uh, another category is headlines. As kids, I mean, you know, be honest, Haas. How, how often did you follow the news when you were a kid? Probably not that much. Uh, <laughs> Probably not much you know, either. I was playing a lot of video, Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Yeah. So it's like, video it's game news, maybe. Arcade. Yeah, video game news. But anyway, uh, so if it, if the wheel lands on headlines, then we have to share uh, what we think are some of the more uh, significant events that happened that month. Uh, then we have what's on, and that's uh, basically what were we watching on television. Oh, Hoss, some of the TV shows in the 90s, man. Oh, especially in the early, oh my gosh. Like, I've got I can't some good even stuff. Like, I've got some good so hard to, to talk about. No, that. I, I'm actually, that's, that's like pretty, pretty much one of my favorite categories, actually. So I'm pretty excited to talk about that one, too. And then we have a CYOA, Choose Your Own Adventure. I don't know about you, Haas, but one of the things that I remember as a kid is reading those Choose Your Adventure novels. And then, like, going. It's like you could die on page. You could, you could go forward <laughs> once and then go back and be dead. Yeah. It was like that. Turn the page twice and you're done. It was, it was like easy. it was like a paper video game. It was. It was. You know? I played the. Sh- I, I used to. Yeah. I, I remember I got my first one at a garage sale. And mm-hmm. I just. Yeah. Anyways. We, we, we'll, we'll, uh, yeah. I, I think I, I probably had an addiction to those things for like a good year and mm-hmm. just like overdid it. I think, I think I just went to many of those. <laughs> you OD'd on choose your own adventure novels. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't, I, yeah, there was one that just still kind of bothers me this day. I still have the book. I have to figure out, I forget what name it was uh-huh. since I was like 10 anyways. Yeah. But it was, uh, that was a pain in the ass that book. Yeah. Like how many times did I die? Like how many times did you die on those average, on those books in general? Like how yeah. like, like, like how like some books would kill you like uh, like fifty times, sixty times, right? Mm-hmm. You would really have to even if you thought it was a smart move, it was it was always a bad move mm-hmm. half the time. So mm-hmm. definitely, definitely. All right, Hoss. So nineteen ninety two, January of nineteen ninety two. Why don't you start us off? What do you remember from January nineteen ninety two? Um, you know, I think obviously, uh, being in middle school, I guess at the time, you know, I mean, obviously the arcades are the biggest part probably for me, you know, and then of course consoles and whatnot, but just, I don't know that that era uh, was different. You know, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was a different time. You know, uh, I remember if you were to go online in any way whatsoever, you'd be on the BBS. Like I was a lot into the, uh, Prodigy BBS back then, you know, before the internet was really, before you had to pay per minute to get on the internet, Mm -hmm. you know, and then, then eventually it became a subscription. Right. So, but, um, I remember prodigy was the, the, my outlet to a lot of the gaming stuff that we were actually, a lot of the stuff we're talking about here and all the wheel, everything encompasses all of it. Actually, there's, there's the BBS has covered all that stuff as well. And I used to live in the BBS world, uh, outside the arcades and console world and, you know, middle school shit, like homework and BS homework you have during those years. But, uh, I, I, for me, it's the arcades, the ice cream shops, the the bbs right getting like tech at an early rate you know what i mean you know before the arcades even had it you know what i mean like that sort of thing having tech early sharing tech at the eight you know 1992 is like unheard of right Definitely. but it was a good place and it was more civil back then in general it was it was a different time so you grew up in austin yes i grew up in austin i i was uh, actually um born up in denton but i moved to austin uh when i was like just not even a year old we moved down to austin and i lived there for 22 years or 21 years, I guess, mm-hmm. something like that, because I went to school there for a while, then I moved to San Marcos. So yeah, 21 years I was in Austin, and then I was there for another two or three years. So I've lived there for quite a while, like most of my life. Um, it was it was different, too. I mean, it was obviously, it, it wasn't blown up like it is now. I mean, you could basically get anywhere in five minutes from downtown to anywhere. Um, it wasn't... Uh, there were a lot of arcades. I mean, we had the mall arcades. We had the uh, we had the ga- gas stations, of course. That had the arcades, the laundromats, um, and you had the respective person who was the the lead person to beat everybody at those given locations, right? And so it was uh, it was interesting. Like I, I can't think of anything that was on my mind outside of like going to see movies, like go play video games, and then hang out and just like I don't know, just water balloon buses and stuff like that you know yeah <laughs> just stupid shit you would do when you're 12 you know just dumb, yes. dumb stuff like that but uh yeah. but the, the arcades were a big part of it i think the arcades is that that year was the year that i got involved heavily in arcades like i, I lived in the arcades like you know whenever i could go i would beg to stay for four hours i would be, or i would pay our you know my friend's big brother to take us there when our parents wouldn't take us and stuff like that because we we're too young and mm-hmm. we'd, we'd basically make money 
uh, just different ways to pay him off to drive us up there. So, I mean, that was pretty much our main concern is can we get to the arcade and how many times can we go? So you were, uh, you were, so you were introduced to computers at a pretty early age. Yeah, yeah. I my first computer was like a 386, I think, in like '89 or something like that. Wow. Maybe like maybe it was a maybe it was a two eighty. No, it was a 386, I think. Maybe it was a two eighty six. Yeah. And then um, I got my first computer, I think, in '91. Uh, first real computer, like a, it was like well, I say real, but it was Crapper Bell, Packard Bell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, I had to learn how to fix that. And I used to get a lot of viruses on that computer. Uh, and so I had to learn how to I had to learn how to read the DOS. I, I read all the DOS books. In all the Windows books, and I had to figure out how to do it myself. You know, I didn't have any help. There was no way to piggyback a hard drive or use a cell phone to take a picture of the problem or the code, right? You had to write it down on a piece of paper. You had to figure it out. You'll find it in the fucking manual. It's like an index, right? Just a pain in the ass. But it was it was a good way to learn. And uh, so I learned quite a bit at an early age how to solder at 12 and stuff like that, you know, because I had to un- desolder the, mo- the modem to get it from... I couldn't even change the IRQs to make another modem work. I had to actually remove the other modem. But it was soldered in, so I had to desolder it. And mm-hmm. that was my first solder job. But yeah, anyways, so that year was a big year. It was like, you know, 91 and 92, it was computer age for me, arcade age and whatnot. And uh, I think being connected to computers back then was good because a lot of people were able to share those in- the information, you know, like this works in this game, this works in this game. You know, you can't do this in Street Fighter 2. You can do this in Mortal Kombat, that sort of thing. And so people would share a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff. I still have dot matrix printouts of like Killer Instinct combos, KI1 combos that were... Uh, as a matter of fact, I still have them. I think I still have them just a room, one room over. Have the freaking like the whole punch on the side, you know, from the dot mm-hmm. matrix paper. Yeah, so it was it was it was cool, man. It was it was neat. Um, sold some fatality sheets, right? You know, from Mortal Kombat, right? Used to print out those fatality sheets and sell them fifty cents a pop. Wow, would be so happy to get them. Really? Yeah. And where would Good you money. sell them? Like outside the school. arcade or at school? School and outside the arcade. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, That's man. Pretty sick. So let's go ahead and uh, try the wheel out, Hoss. Let's check it out. Yeah. Beavis and Butthead. Yes, Beavis and Butthead. 100%. I lived in that fucking world. If it wasn't TV at all, it was Beavis and Butthead and Liquid TV. All right, guys. So once again, we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel, and we're going to see uh, what category we land on. We're going to do this for about, uh, I don't know, like we were we were going back and forth whether we should have a time limit or not. And so we decided we were just going to wing it and, and, and see what we... Uh, just feel it. Yeah, feel yeah it just, out, kind of, just kind of do what, what, what feels right, man. So... Let's go ahead and spin the wheel. Uh, I'll let you go ahead and spin first, Haas. And so let's okay. go ahead and get that. Uh, you're not actually spinning. I have to actually press the button. Which is, you know, but, you are, but you are going to go first. So, uh, cool. All right. Speaking of Beavis and Butthead, shout out to Beavis and Butthead. Yep. Dude. TVCH32. All on right. Twitch, if you want to watch Beavis and Butthead. All right, let's see what our first category is. Headlines. All right, Haas. Okay, start headlines. us off. You know, what's what, what? What are some of the things? What's one thing that you uh, you think people should uh, know about what happened in January nineteen ninety two? Okay, so if, if 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 it's for for the general, okay, so I know a lot of people like old school wrestling. I just don't know if I should go with the wrestling one or the or the AI one. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the AI one because it's it's more relevant to today, right? Okay, so yeah, it, it was relevant to your intro. So it's a it's a good segue. It's true, yeah. To keep on the technology thing, right? Yeah. Uh, the first one is actually related too, but it's it's that's a, kind of like a personal thing. It's like a uh-huh. it's not. Yeah. Anyways, January thirtieth, inventor Ray Kurzweil, Kurzweil uh, publishes his first book, The Age of Intelligent Machines, on mm-hmm. artificial intelligence predicting the popularity of the internet. So yeah, that was uh the age of intelligent machines, right? This is back in ninety two. This is twenty eight years ago, wow. right? No, more than twenty eight years ago. So. You know, the thing is that the fact that that people were taking incentive to kind of like show that sort of interest, you know, when a lot of people didn't show interest, mm-hmm. people were like, oh, the Internet, whatever, you know, it's just for the nerd. You know, back then, you know, think about it. Right. Let's be real. Like if you talked about computers back then, people would just like root you off with some geek. Right. Like it was it was considered like dark, dork stuff to even know about that stuff. Right. Or even talk about it. Right. Mm-hmm. You're always like uh, people always turned an eye to that sort of thing. So it was I think that. It, you know, it seems cool to a certain extent today, but I think that the fact is, considering that there was always that kind of, uh, people were always never wanting to change, I guess, right? So basically, there was probably a lot of people that didn't really, weren't as open to it as they would be today. Let's put mm-hmm. it that way. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, uh, 
I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to explain. But yeah, so I think that was pretty cool. It was on the last day. It was January 30th, right? So I mean, that's pretty much the end of January there. I thought that was kind of neat. Like, um, like, what do you remember most about like the book or like what you've heard about the book? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, okay, so okay, so I, I, I did a little bit of research into it a little bit, uh, just kind of see exactly what the details were and whatnot. I think that my biggest thing is that it was there's a lot of great areas. You know, I mean, you kind of have to leave the door open, I guess, because you can't really predict what it was going to be right how would you how would you really truly predict what it was going to come out to be right there's no way you can't blame somebody for not being that accurate for that sort of turnout right Uh but the ideas that he brings forth and stuff like that about you know um you know things changing and and moving forward and stuff like that and how how these machines are are changing and whatnot is kind of cool it's just like the whole the whole technical part of it's neat outside of that it's uh you know you can't you really can't again you can't flame the guy for you know, being a little bit off with some of the reads. Cause I mean, it's 92. Okay. It's like nobody, it wasn't even widespread. I mean, it was, you know, it's been an army, a military thing for many, many more years than that. But the thing is it wasn't on a, on a consumer level at that amount that it is now or anywhere near it, not even a fraction of a fraction of where it is now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, you know, it just, you know, it's, it's whatever. It's like saying, you know, try to predict a, a thunderstorm or something like that. You know, you can't even get with all the da- data they have, they still can't predict that shit. You know, it's like, you just don't know. People are people. People are different. Some people make weird decisions. You know, the trends are surprising in some ways. You know what I mean? Uh, unpredictable. So, um, but outside of that, I thought that was kind of neat. I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't read the majority of it. I just thought that was really neat. I found that in the list of January things. And I did a little bit of research. Uh, and I kind of just got the gist of it, the Cliff's Notes. And I think it's, I'm, I'm going to have to go through it and actually read the whole thing. And check it out. But I, th- I thought that was really neat, though, for that year having something like that being written and being recognized at that level. So that was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, man. Yeah, um, you talk yeah. about how you like you got your first computer in eighty eight or eighty nine. Eighty nine, dude. Mm-hmm. I-, I did not have a computer until like I think ninety seven. That's fine. I mean, that's uh, normal though. A lot of people didn't have computers until ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah. yeah that's, so that's... the internet came pretty late for me. So. But um, but yeah, it's, it's it's crazy how like people were already starting to think about this this kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean the thing is, remember it's like it's like back then it wasn't even like considered important. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like people didn't give a shit. Like yeah. they're like whatever. You know, internet. You know, like whatever. We're just fine without it. We don't need that technology. You know, yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. You know, you know how it is. You know, when when the world wasn't changed by it yet. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't changed. So. All right, let's go ahead and spin this wheel. Yeah, let's let's go with you now. That's pretty much it, though. Yeah, it's, that was kind of neat. I don't know what it is about wheels, but wheels are pretty sick. Oh, choose your sick. own adventure. Okay. Okay. So, uh, dude, let's 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 go to the game pro, man. Always, always. Let's okay. go to the game pro. I think it's Get time. Out, I think it's time it to time. go to game pro. For those of you just tuning in, guys, this is the uh, Run It Back show, a uh, talk show all about the '90s. We are talking about in January 1992. Every other week, we are going to talk about a, a different month in the same year. And so, right now, we are spinning the the wheel of uh, '90s doom, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know, like how you would describe it. But you know. <laughs> I call it the wheel of doom. I have no idea. It just came out. You know, the... uh, well, it has nothing to do with doom whatsoever. No, uh, no, let's no. see. I'm trying to find the. Uh, okay, here we go. Okay. So, okay, go. Uh, um, so we landed on the. Uh, we landed on the uh, the game pro. Uh, 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 the game pros, excuse me, the game pros category. And so basically what we're going to do is we're going to pick out some of the things that we think are uh, pretty sick uh, in the magazine. And uh, like I mentioned earlier in the show, Haas, like one of my fondest memories growing up is sifting through uh, all those, uh, all those game pros and stuff. It's just always, always and like you mentioned before, uh, why not sift through every different magazine that has the same content, right? Because mm-hmm. it's, it's just fun, right? It's so much fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, you know, it has the same content, we're close to it, but it's just laid out differently and it's need to go through again. So let's let's go ahead and look through this Game Pro first. Because I think uh, this Game Pro is pretty sick. Uh, I lost my encounter again. Shoutouts to archive.org. And so first and f- Oh man, Hook! That came out in 92? Hook? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm going through the list here too. Act Razor, of course, right? Golden Axe 2. Yeah. Pretty sick yeah. cover. Right away, we got, you know, like, it wasn't even really about the articles, right, Haas? It, it was also about the ads, man. 
Like, remember the ads in these hype. game pros? They're yeah. so hype. Yeah, they're All so right. hype. It's like it's like totally like they knew how to advertise to uh-huh. kids and also adults. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Pretty sick, pretty sick, pretty sick. All right, so I wanted to. So I was looking through this issue uh, uh, yesterday, Haas, and you know I was thinking about you know I was thinking about you know sort of what I wanted to talk about with this issue. And so, you know, basically I wanted to kind of divide it into like categories, right? Like I wanted to like talk about a game that I, I remember playing, a game that I, I wish I played, and, and a game that uh, I wish I hadn't played. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uh, just, just start it off by uh, trying to find the page here for it. It's pretty close in the beginning. <clears throat> So I loved my Game Boy, Haas. Like, I, I, I was Me like, too. dude, like, I had to always, like, change out the batteries or, you know, it's like. Oh, and it was pretty frequent if you're playing that much, right? Yeah. You know, you're gonna, it's like every day almost. You know, I snuck it to day. school. I brought it with me at school. Dude, it was just, I loved my Game Pro. I mean, my uh, my Game Boy. And so one of the games that I used to, that I had back in the day for, for Game Boy. <laughs> What's this Turtles game? Because, you know, it's 92, right? Like, yep. Turtles is, like, the biggest thing ever. Yep. I don't think there's anything bigger than the Turtles. And so, like... No. It, it, it's... And so, like, I had to get my hands on everything Turtles-related. It didn't even matter, like, whether the game was good or not. You know yeah, That I mean? game... <laughs> <laughs> that, this game... <laughs> <laughs> can you guess like which category like it's definitely a game i played but one you probably wish you had. i wish i hadn't played <laughs> this yeah, game is not that great <laughs> you know like i, I and, and you know I'm, I'm thinking oh maybe it's like the arcade game or you know it's it's not at all it's it it feels kind of like kung fu for, for it NES. does. It does. It does. It's a little bit delayed on the response. You know, when you press a button a little bit late, right? Yeah. A little bit off. And you can't touch the enemies at all. Like if the enemies touch you, 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 you take damage, which is really annoying. Um, you know, there's there's this cool like skateboard scene that's that's pretty cool. Uh but other than that, you know, this game was 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 no bueno for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't care for it myself. You know, what are, um, what are some of the things uh what are some of the things that you uh that you found uh, pretty interesting in this game, Pro Man. Well, okay, so uh, darn. Um, okay, so I've got a list of things here. Okay, so Game Gear first and foremost, right? I saw the ad for the Game Gear. Okay, I don't know if it came out January ninety one or not, but I just want to talk about the Game Gear real fast because speaking of things that I wish I hadn't played, I'm not saying the Game Gear wasn't something I wish I hadn't played. What I wish I hadn't played on the Game Gear was like certain games like Mortal Kombat. Have you ever played Mortal Kombat on the Game Gear before? Like all my memory that doesn't is, even is sound like a good idea. Dude, to throw a fireball with any character, you have to tap down and then tap forward. You cannot do the halfway point. You cannot do the down forward motion. Uh-huh. It doesn't work that way. So you have to, it's very stiff. It is uh-huh. terrible. It's terrible. People thought it was awesome. I thought it was crap. It's like, you know. But yeah, yeah, that, that's the one thing that stuck out with me, Game Gear. I, I love columns. I still love it. It's simple. It's silly. The music is great. Mesmerizing. The colors look great. With col- Columns looks good on the Game Gear. I'm sorry. And that was pretty much the only game that I thought was worth a damn uh another uh let's see game pros okay let's say uh populous right who played populous Populous. that game was sick yeah that game was sick, sick right tell you know about, like tell them about ter- populous tell them about populous dude terraforming and shit and like creating all sorts of stuff getting new uh controlling the game is a bitch like i could see that today by today's standards getting into populous people are like fuck this shit like i don't want to play this crap like what do those buttons do you know but it's uh it's pretty sick i like the game it was pretty amazing but the big one here is this here's the big one the hap pad ad on page 170. Okay. That's the big one right there for me. Uh, I didn't know that thing existed. I didn't even get to uh, the, the populace yet. Let me see if I can get the Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's page 95. I'm sorry. Uh, that one's on page 95. And uh, so the thing is, um, the so populace, okay, so. Dude, look I at that ad. That ad first. is so sick. <laughs> it is sick. I mean, I, I read the game. And I was like, man, at first I was frustrated. I'll be honest. I was frustrated. I didn't know what to think. I was like, what the hell kind of game is this? And I was like, you know what? Just give it a fair chance. Let's play like a good hour and a half, two hours in this game. So once I got a feel for the menu system and the UI and stuff like that, um, you know, forming these lands, terraforming this to, to meet the criteria of what the game needs is pretty sick. It's really neat. I mean, you could look at it as a isometric 
my well i wouldn't say minecraft really but you know what i mean as far as like terraforming goes uh, mm -hmm. i would say it's on that level sort of thing it's it's, it's it's i mean it's not it sounds fancier than what it is but it's 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 a good game it's a good game for its time i enjoyed it a lot it was one of my favorites uh learned i learned to love it is one of my favorites mm -hmm. um but outside of that uh the big one here is the hat pad i hat think this pad. is going to be relative to a lot of the gamers uh that play that, that we're playing on consoles at the time. Uh, I personally, I have no, I went through this magazine a million times, mm -hmm. but for some reason I just didn't make, maybe I just didn't, wasn't familiar with HAP at the time. You know what I mean? Maybe mm -hmm. I just, so that there's, there's the HAP pad right there at the top left. I had never actually owned one of those. I don't know how well it controls. Uh, the D pad on it, I can't even tell. I remember seeing that. I just remember that was a HAP brand. Mm -hmm. But I'd I, honestly, I'd love to try it out and try that D-pad out and see exactly how good that D-pad is. It looks like it's a crappy D-pad, but I'd like to try it out regardless and see how it is. Um, Look at the copy on uh, this ad. Slow motion and rapid dude. fire. Individual dude, you know what slow motion is, right? Pause, each... rapid fire. But, yeah. Slow motion is <laughs> pause, rapid fire is all it is. Dude, <laughs> that's, that's what I love about it. Just they just advertise slow motion. It's just it's like, blow like, away your competition. Get hap and yep. be happy. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my yeah! Stick to arcade parts, guys. Uh, I mean, those they D pads are a little scary. I'll be honest. Drive your competition mad. If those D pads are truly low profile and the disc itself is about maybe about two millimeters high, maybe three millimeters high, it might work. Yeah. But if it has too much of give, too much of a range of motion, it's not going to be a good D pad. Yeah, shout out to the Midwest. It has to be low profile. Hap controls Elk Grove, Illinois. Let's go. <laughs> Damn, wow. dude. Those guys uh, doing all bucks. the work back then. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It, making money in the arcades wasn't enough for those guys, right? They wanted to make some money on the consoles, too. Yeah, definitely. I thought that was neat, though. I, that was something that I must have missed back in the day. Yeah. That I thought that was kind of neat. Dude. 25 bucks, though. That's like, what, 50 bucks today? 60 bucks today? Yeah. It's like buying a wireless or like a Nintendo uh, Switch Pro Controller. Mm-hmm. Dude. Since we're talking about like sort of arcade, uh, one of the games you know that that and and and, and I'm gonna fully admit this, Hoss. Um, I was a very simple kid when it came to video games, right? That's I just fine. I just liked you know I, I just liked things that were very simple in terms of you know. If you're having fun, that's all that matters, game. right? That's the whole point. And so, um, you know, I liked I liked the games where you could mash. You know, I was, I was, I was very into those things. And so, uh, hold on world champion. We see a world champion up there at the top, right? Yeah. Who's this guy? This guy's go the, for uh... gold racing competition, tense action, challenging adventure, and just great fun. <laughs> yeah. So he's a pro at micro machines, big nose, the caveman. So what four games did he win the gold at? Let's see. The ultimate you got... man, the fantastic adventures of Dizzy. What the fuck is the one with the dude Nukem looking dude on the right? What is that one there? The one on the to the right of Big Nose Caveman? Yeah, the ultimate stunt man. Ultimate stunt man? Okay, good. Micro Machines, I play the shit out of Micro Machines, okay? I can see how that could be competitive, okay? I'm down with that. I've never played the other three. I'm not familiar with those other three at hey, all. Hey, th th this is an ad for that thing, right, Haas? Where it was like. Which thing? Comerica, this is an ad for those cartridges where you would just load them into like a like a NES looking loader. Remember, like it was. Oh yeah, it was that? an easy kind of like stop and go sort yes, of thing, right? Yes, like, yes. As if flash carts already weren't that easy, right? <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it isn't. It's kind of funny, uh, but yeah. So got it too. So anyway, so um, here's a game that's very near and dear to my heart. Uh, if I can get to it, oh, there it is. Uh, let's King of Mon King of the Monsters. Oh my God! King yes. of the Monsters. Yes. Oh my gosh! Level Dude. three power up, man. Nothing more exciting than that, right? Dude, this game is so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. I love that game. It's, uh, so, what did GamePro give it here? He gave it basically perfect score, uh, almost except perfect. Gameplay. Right, man. And that's what is that the I mean it's, this is still the Neo Geo version correct? Yeah, this is this is what the is Neo that? Geo that's... section of, of this month's game. Program. Okay, okay, so so basically they're rating it. I mean it's the exact same as the arcade, so it's yeah, yeah. so they rate that the same both ways. Okay, yeah, pretty cool. I suppose it was a little bit, a little bit of input. Now I think about it, it wasn't too. 
I it mean, was fun, right? Yeah, dude. But, I mean, that was the standard, right? That it, was the standard back then. I mean, look at Desert Strike. Look at look at Urban Strike. Those games have a little bit of delay, hey, right? You it was you... just awesome, like blowing things up and like. Yeah. <laughs> level th- level three though, man. Some level threes like growths were amazing on some uh-huh. of those characters, man. But uh, King of the Monsters was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, man. Other than that, like there weren't really any other games. I know you had a bunch of other ones, like. Uh, but anyway, uh, I mentioned Pit Fighter because I I do remember. Uh, borrowing that from a friend. Um, <laughs> this was it you that said they knew somebody was a pro- professional pit fighter? Was that you that said you know pro no, pit no, fighter? No, that, that wasn't me. That was definitely not me. <laughs> <It> was <somebody. laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> I was like, how do you how do you get pro at pit fighter? That wasn't me. <laughs> it's like a three player. I mean, it's two yeah. players here, but three player in the arcade. Yeah, the oh, Genesis man. version it was pretty bad. Control the graphics were pretty crappy. Uh, but hey, you know it was it, you didn't have to. You didn't have to put in your quarters. Like, that was the big thing, right, Haas? Like, those arcade ports? Like, You're clearly the arcade ports were nowhere near the arcade, but it was, like, it was an approximation. It's weird, right? Like, how we were so okay with that back then. We just wanted to be able to play it at home. We were so desperate to play it at home that we, we were happy with whatever we got, you know, yeah. as long as it was somewhat decent, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's really interesting how, like, you know, it's, it's our tolerance has, 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 has gone down. You know, for 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 ports that aren't exactly perfect. You know, you know and the thing is, I, I, I'm okay with like maybe stuff being slightly off. But the thing is, like, if it's inconsistent, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If it's not a consistent offness, mm-hmm. or I, how to put that, I, you know what I mean? Like, if it's, I don't know. If, there's mm-hmm. so many different things that that matter now because everything's so competitive mm-hmm. compared to before, right? At a higher scale, so it's like it's hard to say. I mean, mm-hmm. it, they just got to port it perfectly. They got to be, do a better job. I think of these, especially now with all the technology and all the hardware with all the cores you can use now to utilize uh, better emulation and stuff like that. Why not? Mm-hmm. Why not do a better job? Mm-hmm. So were there any other, were there any, any other things that you wanted to point out from the game? Pro Let me see here. Okay. So I've also got, let's see. Um, anybody play. Okay. So I was looking at, okay. So golden Axe two, mm-hmm. golden Axe two. It's not on my list, but golden Axe two for sure. Um, you know, it's another dog out with us. Golden Axe 2 was, in my opinion, here you go, go ahead, go ahead, go up there. It was the only other good Golden Axe. Mm. Golden Axe 3 was really bad. Mm. Like, Golden Axe 3 is trash. Hey, what's like, up, I love the first two. Mm. The first two Golden Axes were amazing. <laughs> Look at this art. This art is amazing. <laughs> dude, what's that guy's face? Holy shit, dude. It looks yeah. like the mask from fucking like this, a Jim Carrey movie kind of. This guy's veins are about to like burst open, dude. <laughs> dude, his bicep is being crushed by his like... <laughs> his, <laughs> it's like his bicep's not even showing. Yeah, up, right? He's, like, He's taking yeah. the most barbaric shit ever, dude. <laughs> He's just... <laughs> You know, <laughs> and why is he holding his sword while he's taking? I guess to pr- to protect himself, right? Because when would you be most vulnerable when you're, you know? And who's the who's the Amazon in the background? Like I don't remember yeah, her being I in the game. Know. I don't really is know. Is she in the game? She's not in the game, is I don't she? Know she is. You know what, dude? Like Golden Axe for me, it was just like, hey, Steve. I liked the graphics and everything, but like the gameplay was was pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? It was. It was. And so, mm-hmm. like, I, I. I I didn't wasn't really a big fan of the Golden Axe series. I played the first one. I played the second one, obviously. I never played the third one. I never played the third one at all. There's just, I mean, maybe it's my opinion, but it's nothing compared to the first two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, did were there any? Uh, so we were talking about Game Boy earlier. Like, what are some yeah. other Game Boy games you remember playing? I mean, I played Mario Land. I played Metroid. I played mm-hmm. uh, what is it? Uh, of course, Tetris. Like our probably more Tetris than anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else was it? Uh, I mean, we would be remiss if we didn't uh, have an honorable mention for Road Rash. For what? That? Oh, Road Rash, yeah. absolutely. Road Rash. Dude, Road Rash is sick, dude. Yeah, dude. Road, Road Rash. Rash is sick. That game is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Just don't try playing two player. I think I don't know if two player is available in the first one, but in part two you can play two player. But it's such such shit controls. Yeah. What even worth it? Um, but yeah, Road Rash one and two are sick. I beat both those games, but all the motorcycles, a lot of fun. I, I still to this day think back on going through those games again and playing them yeah definitely definitely all right i think i think there's also uh act razors in there too mm-hmm. actually act razors reviewed this month as well in game pro act razor was pretty sick i love act razor 
all the town stuff, all the, all the stuff you do in town, then go back in and fight battles on the on the two D two D stages and stuff like that. Amazing. Yeah, Ack Razor. Uh, I played the second one. Um, I definitely should play the first one. First one's yeah. First one's a little bit different because of all the town mm -hmm. stuff, but it's it's good. It's really good. It's really really good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spin the wheel again. Okay. Remember, guys, we need a name for the wheel. All right, another choose your own adventure. So uh, go right ahead, Hoss. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with. Man, I want to steal. Well, we're both doing the category, so it doesn't matter, right? I want to do two thumbs up now, but I want to kind of jump right into the what's on, really badly. I, I, but you know what? Should we say that for last? Should we say it? I don't know. I, mean, I know it's choose your own adventure, but whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you want to do. You know what? Let's do the two thumbs up first. Okay. Let's do the two or two thumbs first. Let's do that one. Let's get that one out of the way. Uh, All right. All right. That, well, we may not get a chance to do what's on, will we? There's a possibility we won't get to do what's on, right? We'll see. If we... we'll see. We'll okay, okay. We can, we can always uh, we can always limit how much time we, we talk about each topic or whatever. So, okay, yeah. so first and foremost, I'd like to mention Juice, the movie Juice with Juice. Tupac and Omar, Omar Epps. Oh my gosh. That movie, I probably watched like a good, I don't know why I've watched it so many times, but I watched the shit out of that movie. <laughs> and like, That's I, pretty I really random. Think... That's pretty random, bro. Awesome. It is very random. I mean, I used to watch New Jack City, all those movies, man, all that stuff with, you know, I don't know why. I just watched all of those. So the thing is, like, I like Juice a lot. I think it's a really, really good movie. Uh -huh. I, I look back at some of the acting. If you look at the trailer that I linked there, it's really fucking bad acting. Like, maybe as a kid, it seemed cooler than it was, maybe. Uh -huh. But Omar Epps, that dude's been, like, alive for, like, 200 years. That guy, I feel like the guy's been around. He's been around since the Beat It video of Michael Jackson, right? That guy's, that guy's like, not aged. Like, he's the same age as he was, like, 30 years ago. New Jack the Rest. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. No, but yeah, so Juice, yeah, it's uh Let's see here. I think the trailer might be muted, I think, possibly. Let's see. Maybe it's just mine. My... This, Juice. This trailer is, is, is out of this world. <laughs> yep. Tupac's like, give me the gun. Give me the gun. I'll hold the gun for you. Dude. Like, I wasn't... Oh, yeah, the DJ competition with Queen Latifah? Oh, shit. Queen Latifah? Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Oh, my goodness. You got Samuel L. in this movie, too, I think. <laughs> but what's up now? I'm sorry. Oh no no no! I was just I was just looking at the trailer, dude. It's pretty crazy, man. <laughs> Shit gets crazy real fast in this movie. It starts yeah. all chill and normal, and then it changes real quick. The yeah. last quarter of the movie, <laughs> dude. You know what I noticed about like '90s trailers? Like they're really long. They have like they they really they, they have the narrator. The whole movie. They're law, right? They basically show you the whole movie. I know exactly what's gonna go on in this movie right now. Like, <laughs> I know how the, how it goes down. I see uh -huh. what Tupac what happens with Tupac, right? You uh -huh. know? They even give you the heads up. They're like, hey, he gets the gun for the first time and now he's shooting people left and right. Yeah, definitely. That that's crazy. That's crazy. Man. Dude, like what what other movies do you remember uh, from from? Okay, well, I have Reservoir Dogs on the list, but I want to list one that I didn't see back in the day, uh -huh. which was actually like recognized as one of the releases of January of '92. Uh, it's called Highway to Hell. Okay, so now, this shit so looks you really bad. You gotta tell me a little bit about this movie because I don't know anything. About it's just it. basically okay. It's really stupid. It's like a comedy horror sort of show. A lot of gore. It's like a typical B movie that's supposed to be like. Uh -huh. Tell you the truth, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know how to properly explain it, make any sense, because it doesn't make any sense. You just have to see the trailer and take a look at it. It's really that bad. It's really bad. I've watched the trailer twice. I still can't. So, I just don't know. So it's already pretty cool with all the bugs. With all the, the... Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? This trailer is so random. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, the portal, wait, wait, portal, right? <laughs> hey, I know that like actor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is cinema at its best. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Damn. Okay. 
Are those body parts? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is... What? <laughs> and this came out in January 92? That's crazy. Yes. yes. I don't believe you found this. What is this like movie about? Right like, this is so weird. It's making sense. It's a highway to hell, but I don't know what it means or what its purpose is and why the dog is happily happy throughout the whole. Yeah. This is so Chimera weird. dog, too. Like, yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> what? The... <laughs> that was a really, uh, that was a really long fall. Dude, this is so weird. What? What's <laughs> what the... <laughs> This movie is crazy. <laughs> what? <laughs> we have to watch this movie, Hoss. <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't want to oh, tell you any of the movies. Now. Like, none of the movies that I pick can pale to comparison. <laughs> like, it's not even worth going through this category anymore. Like, I can't even, like... <laughs> How did you expect me to follow this? <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I stumbled across it. I never saw this at that time. Dude, the I, font is sick. The, the logo? It is sick. It is definitely sick. What? Someone could write... Someone could get their PhD writing a dissertation on this <laughs> On this Seriously. trailer, not just a film. Yeah, just, just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Um, yeah. That's, 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 it's, that's crazy. Uh, pretty that's, bad. That's crazy. Pretty fucking bad. I'm going to pass it over to you, though, because that was pretty cheesy. And again, I've not seen it. I kind of want to see it really badly now. Uh, but I, it, it stuck out to me because I was like, highway to hell. Dude, I should have known about this movie, right? But dude, it wasn't. Dude, like I said, how am I going to follow that? Dude. All right, all right. Well, you, got, you got to get some good stuff. You get some right, good stuff. Right. Well, well, you know, when, when, when I was thinking back on, you know, 1992, January 1992, uh, the movie, you know, that, that, that I – sort of remember being really hyped for and then watching in the movie theater with my dad. And so, uh, you know, just, uh, just real quick, you know, when I was growing up, you know, one of the things that my dad and I used to do a lot is he used to take me to these action movies to see action movies and mind you, Hasa was a kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so that but, was a big thing. That's a big deal. It's a big deal then. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, so basically uh... like, like even like as early as six or seven, my dad would take me to see these like action movies, <laughs> you know, like the Lethal Weapons and the Die Hards and the Total Recalls, and you the know how much shit. like swearing and sex and violence are are, are oh, in those movies. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it was like he just he, I I I went to this I went to see all these movies, these action movies with him, and uh, one action movie that I remember. Uh, uh, pretty fondly, and I, and I kind of watched it again last night. Is, is Free Jack? Um, I don't know if you remember Free Jack, Hoss, but uh, of, of course, Emilio Estevez, dude. dude. <laughs> During dude, his heyday era, right? You know, dude. Not only was Emilio Estevez in this movie, uh, Rene Russo was in the movie. Okay, Mick Jagger was in the movie. So for those of you who've never seen uh, Free Jack, and uh, uh, you know, I, I, I and and uh, we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna after I give my synopsis of Free Jack, I'm gonna hand it over to Haas because I know he has some, uh, he has some things to get off his chest with regards to a to a recent uh, popular Netflix show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> yeah. so what's the plot of, uh, of of Free Jack? And so basically, it's you know in the future, people have like people have. Uh, have have learned to do two things, Haas. Number one, they've been able to temporarily store someone's consciousness on some sort of like they didn't they don't call it the cloud, but the name they called it in the movie they called it the uh, they called it the I think I, they called it the spiritual switchboard. That's what they called it. It was basically like a cloud, <laughs> and like you can only keep your consciousness there for a limited amount of time, and so until you needed a new body, right? And so, thankfully for these people, not only have they discovered how to store consciousness somewhere else outside the body, but they've also learned how to time travel and take people from the past and teleport them back to the present. <laughs> that Mule SMS scream is one of the best yeah. fucking screams ever in all mankind, dude. And so, basically, what people do in the future is if they want a new body... <laughs> <laughs> they'll 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 basically uh, hijack or they'll teleport somebody who was like gonna die anyway because like it's the past right so like 
You know, yeah. you look back and say, okay, that guy died. So they'll grab that person right before they die and then transplant the consciousness into that body. And they're called so Free Jacks. Like you know, and, and, it was like a TV show <laughs> that uh, came out on Netflix recently. That and so know. and so the movie right revolves around Emilio Estevez's character. Uh, I already forgot uh, his name. I should I should you know help me out, Hoss. What's his, what's the name of, what's the name of uh, Emilio Estevez? I think last time I saw Free Jack was two thousand. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, I keep forgetting. I, mean, I can tell you all the actors' names, but you know, the, mm-hmm. Anthony Hopkins, by the way, has been the same age for the past. Yeah, Anthony years. Hopkins is in the movie. There's some just mad actors in that movie, right? Yeah, Ray Russo, Anthony Hopkins, Mick Jagger, Emilio Estevez. Uh, who was that? Who else is in there? Yo, Alex Furlong. Furlong. Yeah, Alex, Alex Furlong. Furlong. So Alex Furlong is a race car driver. And apparently he got into an accident. And remember that scene where the car, like, <laughs> like flies right into the barricade or the, the bridge? And so basically the people in the future, they decide to free Jack Furlong. And so right before his car hits the the bridge, they teleport him into the future. <laughs> I was like, this is a really convoluted way to, to, to yeah, right? Like, yeah. like, think about all the moving parts involved in getting a new body, dude. <laughs> right? Like, you gotta, st- you gotta store, <laughs> you gotta store your consciousness somewhere. Then you gotta go back in time. Or you gotta try and extract somebody from time, dude. Twelve monkeys basically stole this idea, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But I know Haas that there's one Netflix show that that you think is uh is is is, is just blatant in its uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, man, I might I might get some flack back for this. Uh-oh, but yeah, uh-oh. Altered Carbon is a complete ripoff. Oh no, Altered Carbon. It's a ripoff. Dude, there's a lot of people that love that show, dude. So you gotta be careful. I know. We might. I hate, I hate the show. This this I can't this, stand this, this, show. this talk show might end before it even begins. So. You know, you no, know. I know, I know. I mean, it's my own opinion. I, I know that the majority like the show. I think it's too try hard. I think it's not. It is try too way too hard to make it seem cool. I don't like it. <laughs> That's just me though. Dude, yeah, it, it, I'd but... rather watch the I'd rather watch the cartoon reimagine. I think they have the cartoon version of it or some sort of a digital version now mm-hmm. that they released. I might be down to watch that because I couldn't stand the actors. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's the case. Maybe if I, I could tolerate that one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, basically the another movie that I remember watching uh, back in 92. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to get the Three Ninjas, Herb Durkin. Don't worry. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> and worry. Kickback, too. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. There. That's and funny. And so, um, you know, another. <laughs> Do you remember this movie, dude? Um, the, this is another example of one of those trailers that just basically gives the entire thing away um, but uh, another movie that I remember watching uh, back in January 92 was, or I think this was a home video release I'm not sure but I definitely remember watching this in the theater do you remember a movie <laughs> called V.I. Warshawski <laughs> Dude, she she the I were Shusky by Kathleen Kathleen Turner. Kathleen Turner, yeah, dude, dude, she was. I love her movies. She's always playing a crazy part. She was in Serial Mom too, wasn't she? She was Serial Mom as well. I think so I believe. So yeah, so she's so V I Warshawski, right? It's 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 basically uh, an adaptation of a novel series, and so V I Warshawski is this detective, and she's based in and uh, she's a Chicago detective. So it takes place in Chicago. Like everything I know about Chicago are, is from this movie. <laughs> Fucking Jurassic Park. Uh uh uh. Didn't say the magic word. So I probably don't know. I probably didn't know anything about Chicago. <laughs> but, uh, dude. <laughs> this, this Fucking movie. Newman, dude. Newman's getting his ass kicked. Dude. Kathleen Turner. She could, uh. She, she had that deep voice. And did you know, Haas, that they wanted to make this a franchise? How progressive is that, right? In 1992, they wanted to make. A film franchise with a female leading role. I would have done it. I would have watched all of it. The movie is great. I think the movie's great. I watched a lot of her movies. I thought the movie was great, but it didn't do really. It didn't do very well in in in, in the theaters. I think it's just because of the perception. You know, people were just back then. People were less accepting of a woman having lead role, like you said. That's just like like here's the thing. Like she played lead role really well in a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. Okay, like everything. She did a really good job. Uh, I love Serial Mom. I thought that was amazing too. I I think that uh, I think today if that was re-released, I'm pretty sure it'd do better, even with a shitty shitty actress, right? Just because mm-hmm. of what it is. 
but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a shame, but it's a sick movie. Yeah, and like in the Very movie, right? Movie. It's like it, it's you know everyone's kind of like it's 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 kind of. It's a lot deeper than people give it credit for. It's like a Mission Impossible, but like a comedy Mission Impossible. But it's also right? like, but it's also a social commentary on gender roles. Because yeah. you know, throughout the entire movie, everyone has an opinion of what VR Warshawski should be, or you know, this idea that oh, why should a woman be a detective and and stuff like that. And so I think it was really progressive the film in terms of you know putting a limelight on feminist issues. And this is 1992. How sick would it have been yep. if the if the movie didn't flop? But I think the I think the movie was pretty good. I definitely think the the movie was pretty good. I still remember it very clearly. I, I watched it a few times, uh, not just once, but a few times at least. So All it's right. a lot of funny. I mean, she's I, I really like her movies are great just in general. So check out her movies if you haven't. They're really good. All right, let's spin the wheel again. Let's see what we got here. Films again, but we used up okay. all our films, so we gotta spin again. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <clears throat> Headlines. Okay. All right. Um. So actually, I went over mine, but you didn't go over yours. I think so. It's it's all you this time around, right? Dude, like I said, I was a pretty simple kid. I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention. I do know, and the only reason I know this is because a teacher of mine mentioned it. Uh, you know, during that week. Uh, but did you know that on January 1st, that was the official date uh, when uh, the, uh, the the Soviet Union became the, the Russian Federation? No shit. Yeah, they had this like, they had this like weird other acronym. So, you know, for those of you who remember your history, basically, you know, the collapse of the Soviet Union was, you know, basically like in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, 91 was basically when, you know, the Soviet Union was kaput. And uh, on January 1st, that was the official name of uh, of, of the Russian Federation. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, every time I think about that, I think about Z- Gorbachev coming off a helicopter to visit Zangief <laughs> and do a dance with him. Like, every fucking time. Like, it's yeah. like, it all coincides, right? It, you know, it all kind of goes together. It's just crazy, yeah. though. Like, you know, as a kid, right? Like, I knew, obviously, what was going on because, you know, people were talking about it at school and stuff. But it's just so crazy how like you're so oblivious. Like we lived through all those amazing events, Huss. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And to think that there's a lot of shit that was going on that they kept in check while we were able to thrive. You know what I mean? And do well. Uh, not as much selling out, I guess. You know what I mean? From big corpse, it was it hadn't started to get to that level yet. Yeah, yeah. But uh, forget that stuff, man. Let's let's, let's, let's talk about wrestling again, dude. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Dude, dude. So, so, so. Oh, we we never talked about it, right? You you decided not to talk about it. I was gonna save that one just in case. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So so let's talk about wrestling, dude. So so you 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 said you had a well. Well, let's do it chronologically because I'm pretty sure yeah. my wrestling memory. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a big wrestling fan. Well, I I was a big wrestling mm-hmm. fan. Um, you know, I'm not like one of those like super wrestling fans where, you know, I watch everything or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> We're ancient. But dude, like, I wonder why, like, you know, something I've been thinking about lately is like, like, why did I get into wrestling? How did I even get into that? You know what I mean? Like, can I remember the first time I, I watched wrestling? Cause I, cause I can't. Um, so it, it was, it was, it was really weird. Like, I don't really, I can't really, I can't really pinpoint like exactly when I started to, watch wrestling as a kid and of course you know as a kid right like you you, you think it's real and stuff as a kid right yeah uh, until least, like until more you, dramatic yeah so like like around this time this is kind of when i started to start when i started to smarten up <laughs> and it was like hey okay th- 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 clearly this is not real clearly this is not uh them uh them fighting for real um and like i i do remember distinctly Haas, and i don't know if this was in 91 or 92 but like I started to feel sad, you know, because like I I thought it was real, and then I was like, wow, it's it's not. It's, it's like, like the Santa Claus thing too, right? Same sort of thing. Yeah. No, no, I wasn't sad about that. I was like, I feel like I was sadder about learning about pro wrestling than I was about Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or the or the Two Fairy. But um, 
But yeah, man, it was weird. It was like, wow, that's, that kind of sucks. And then that lasted for about like, I don't know, three days. <laughs> and then I so just then started watching there, wrestling right? again. And then I realized, right, as a kid, I was just like, I just watch this just for the entertainment, you know. And, you know, one of the things, you know, that I remember as far as January 92, if we're going to talk about wrestling, Haas, you know, we got to, you, you, you know who we got to talk about, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's everybody. You know, well, everyone. There's too but, much. There's too much. You know, but I mean, there's but, typical under the giant Hulk Hogan, mm-hmm. Undertaker, of course. But but I definitely think. the person that we have to talk about if we're talking about January '92. January, yes, yes. You know, we're talking about we got to talk about uh, none other right than the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Dog. Remember that in January '92, it was January 19th when Ric Flair. Defeated twenty nine other men to become the WWF champion. <laughs> the Rick Rumble. He, he was he was old in ninety one. Let's be right. <laughs> Woo! Old. That's right, Bones. And Woo! He's been like eighty five for the past like hundred years. This Royal Rumble, uh, it's okay. So there there have been a lot of crappy Royal Rumbles, in my opinion, Haas. Too many gimmicks. Oh, too many lulls. Too many wrestlers in the ring. Oh yeah. Uh. Probably the worst ones were a lot of them. A lot of the ones in the '90s that were really bad. Um, but the 1992 Royal Rumble, Haas was, you know, it was it was pretty it was it was pretty spectacular. Uh, and the only reason it was spectacular is because of one man, and that was Ric Flair. Uh, he just he just went out there and he just I don't know I don't know how to describe it, Haas, but. He, he just <laughs> he mesmerized me for sixty minutes. <laughs> no, Ric Flair's hype, man. I, I, he's he's sick. So this this was. I mean, he went wait. So he went straight back to WCW the year after, right? Back to yeah. WCW so so this, right? yeah. So after this, uh, you know, a year afterwards, um, basically, you know, I think the story goes that the WWF really had nothing creatively for him, and so, you know, Ric Flair decided, you know, maybe it would be a good time to go back to WCW. And that's one of my favorite matches too. I mean, you know, it's, it didn't happen in 92, but it happened in 93. But one of my all-time favorite wrestling matches, Haas, is Monday Night Raw, Loser Leaves Town, retirement match, Ric Flair yeah. versus Mr. Perfect. Oh my God. Yep. That match was sick. Um, Mr. Perfect and his gum, man. Yeah. And then, you know, Ric Flair went back to WCW, had that great match with Vader. More matches with Sting and Steamboat, and then, then Hogan came and whatever. But anyway, like, this was a sick Royal Rumble, dude. Yep. It, like, it wasn't like you know how like in a lot of Royal Rumbles, it's like, you know, no disrespect, but like a lot of the participants in the Royal Rumble are like, you know, people that don't really have a chance to win, or like there's like yeah, yeah, yeah. they're clearly it's just there to fill up space. Like, remember right. in the nine? Remember later in the nineties. When like Vince McMahon was hurting so much that he had to like ask like luchadors and stuff. <laughs> like, they had yeah, like dude, random hilarious. people go into the into, random people enter the Royal Rumble. That was a big transition <clears throat> for, uh, for for WWE actually. Yeah. And uh, but in this Royal Rumble, dude, Haas, this was the creme de la creme. Man, I wanna, I wanna, I always wanted to check out the list. Let me look up at the list of participants in the 1992 Rumble, man, because that's pretty sick, dude. Okay, so let's look at the entrance, dude. Look at some of these names, dude. Okay, so 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 uh so the Royal Rumble started with the Bulldog and the Million Dollar Man, so that's already godlike, right? Yep. That's Teddy like a main Biasi. event in most house shows. Okay. Yep. So that, back then, so that was the British Bulldog and Ted DiBiase. Flair went in third. Jerry Jerry Sags. Um, he, uh, he went in fourth. Haku, remember? Haku was godlike. Yep, Haku. Yep. Shawn Michaels, Tito Santana, The Barbarian. The Barbarian, holy shit. The Texas Tornado, Kerry Von Erich. Uh, Eric, Kerry Von Erich, yep. Sad rip. Repo, so sad Repo Man, a.k.a. Smash Repo of... Man. A, a.k.a. Smash of Demolition, I think. He was smashed, right? He was, was a, Repo Man was like the precursor to IRS, I think. Yeah. Greg the Hammer I Valentine. Think, I think, anyways, yeah. yeah. Greg the Hammer Valentine. 
Nikolai Volkov. Big Boss Man. People forget how godlike Big Boss Man was. Dude, Big Boss Man could cartwheel faster than any fat dude I've ever seen dude, in my entire big life. Big Boss like, Man? I've never seen a fat guy cartwheel so well. Seriously. Dude, the Big Boss Man was just ridiculous. It really was. It really oh, I'm was. sorry. I'm thinking Batman Bigelow. I'm yeah. sorry. Big Boss Man. Yeah, yeah. What am I saying? I'm stupid right Hey, now. what's up, t -Sec? Uh So t -Sec has a question, Hoss. He says, do you guys think the Royal Rumble is a good wrestling concept in general? I think it's just if you understand the bullshit behind it and you're excited to see the randomness of who might turn out, you're never going to know who's going to win. But, you know, the thing is, like, it, it might end up surprising you, which it probably will, and that's what it's all about. Just about the shock factor. You, you know, t -Sec, it, it just like from a fan perspective, when when I watch the Rumble and like I imagine like all of the producers putting the match together, Haas, I feel like this is like a match where like like I, I wonder I wonder if any you know current or past WWE producers have uh, talked about whether or not they enjoy putting together the Rumble because it seems like on paper to be like a fun thing to put together, right? Yep. To kind of plan out. Like, obviously, you'll have your winner, but, like, how exactly are you going to get to that? You know what I mean? Like, you know your beginning and you know the end. And there's so many moving parts in between. And then you have the sub-stories. It's almost like the Rumble match is, like, is, it's almost like a, a, a match. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a episode, right? Like, all different storylines go into the match. Right. So, like... Like, if the Rumble is, like, planned to its fullest potential, then I think it's a really great thing. But, like, if you just half-ass the Rumble, then it's kind of like, okay, whatever, you know? It's a bunch of dudes running in there and throwing each other out of the fucking thing. It's, like, just a random-ass fucking... Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, because at what point do you do you cut? Like, how, how much time do you spend between each of the two? Like, how big are the wrestlers? How popular are they? How much time do you give? How much time do you give to the new guy who you want to introduce yeah. as one of the next big guys, right? And how do you do that? With that, with making it while making it look good and not doing it too much or too little, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and to me, right, like it's all about like what exactly, like like what exactly are you trying to accomplish with the rumble? You know what I mean? Like for example, in this rumble, ninety two rumble. So I think the final three was like Flair, Sid, and Hogan, right? Um, like I think all of us anticipated that it was going to be Flair and Hogan at WrestleMania. At least that's what I wanted. Obviously that right. never happened. Hogan went on to face Sid and, and, and Flair went on to face Savage. But like, like, like what are you trying to accomplish with the rumble? You know what I mean? Like you yeah. want to put the belt on Flair. That's cool. You know, but, but what was that whole thing about Hogan pulling Sid out of the ring from the outside? Like, like if you're yeah. trying to like if, if 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 Hogan is your number one baby face, like why would you make him do something like that? <laughs> right? Like is like uh, like on what moral what what moral compass are you operating on, under to think right. that that's going to get a positive response out of the crowd? <laughs> Maybe they're trying to turn him into a villain and it didn't work or something. I mean, who knows? Or try to ease him into the villain role? Maybe I, I don't know. Like. It's every man for himself, right? You know, so like, you know, Sid eliminated Hogan. They're supposed to be friends, but there's no friends in competition. No. So obviously Hogan looks like he's in the wrong here. But then that's not what they were trying to do, supposedly. They wanted to, they wanted to get Sid over as the, as, as the heel. But why would you book the Rumble that way then? It just doesn't make sense to me. Unless there was some stuff that is un unsaid, right? That was random that happened that wasn't according to plan. Nah, I'm pretty sure this was all book, but you know, if anything, if anything, it should have been the other way around, right? Like, why didn't Hogan yeah. eliminate Sid and then Sid reach over? Like, it would make more sense because he's taller, right? It'd be easier right, for him right, to right. do. Exactly. It's like, why would Hogan be the one? Like, I don't know. Yeah, like maybe agree, maybe it's because like they wanted that rub, they wanted Sid to to eliminate Hogan, but like in the long run, like it just doesn't make any sense. I, I've always this has always been to me one of the most curious booking decisions in wrestling history. You know what I look at it as? The, somebody hired a friend. That friend wanted to do the job. You know, he's a <laughs> buddy of a buddy of a buddy. 
and he's in the job, not qualified for it, right. trying to do things that are different, and it doesn't work out. They gave him a shot, didn't work out. Find somebody else. Yeah. Right? How many times that happen in the professional world everywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. Semiconductor, anywhere you go. It's always the case, right? Which in some cases is a good thing. Maybe a friend of a friend is like the smartest guy you ever bring in. But in most cases, unfortunately, it's not the case. It's not the case. So you got a wrestling memory, right? Of course. All right. What's your wrestling memory, man? Mine is okay. Here we go. This is this is one of my. I, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Roddy Piper, but Roddy Piper on January 19th beats Mountie to become the WWF dude, dude, Intercontinental but, Champion. Before you talk about that specific match, Hoss, and, and and I might invite some heat here at this point. Okay. But I was never a big Roddy Piper fan. You know what it was? You know so, what made so, me a fan of his? Yeah, so so I want you to convince me, Hoss. Okay, right, watch right. They Live. Watch They Live and then watch Roddy Piper fight after that. Okay. Okay? And then watch the Goonies Cindy Lauper video uh, mm-hmm. for Goonies mm-hmm. and watch that too. Okay. And then you'll find some love for Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper is hype. I'm sorry. He's Watch They Live. If you haven't seen They Live... That should be enough to get you on Roddy, Roddy Piper's uh, bandwagon. Uh, maybe not. Maybe like, not I, li- I liked fine. a lot of his work back when he was with Crockett, like during the early, you know, NWA days. I just think that but... he brings hype and he brings this this sort of like, I, I feel like, like it's like, you know, sometimes you see a wrestler that's on or you see somebody who's on, whether it's they're wrestling or not, right? Maybe he's doing an like infomercial or something. If I see Roddy Piper on TV, I'm going to tune in until he's done talking. I don't know what it is. Just Roddy Piper for me. I don't know. I, I can't really explain it. I think it's the movie. They live. After watching him whoop so much ass in that movie, I was sold, right? I mean, I was sold on that. I mean, that movie is one of the best movies I've ever seen, and I still love it to this day. I could watch that a million times. Have you seen it, by the way, Layla? I won't, I won't try to stray too much here, but... Dude, uh, long time ago, man, and I don't even remember it, dude. We should rewatch that movie. We should definitely yeah. watch Layla. You know what's funny about this is that Piper never really won a title. I think this is, like, his only title, right? I think so. I want to say yes. Yeah. Dude, how godlike was the icy belt? <laughs> I'm all out of gum, exactly. <laughs> Dude, the icy belt was so sick. I mean, I know it's everyone's favorite belt, but like, it just looks nice. Like, there's it's a like, reason for that because it's sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really sick. It is. It's really better sick. than the winged I mean, eagle for sure. Better than the winged eagle. I think so. I think it's Piper, better though. Than yeah, so I mean, the thing is, watch they live, and then you know, again, you know, it just might just be like less exposure to the the character itself. Probably mm. that's probably what it comes down to. You know, I mean, I was exposed to probably some stuff that, and there's probably plenty of wrestlers that I don't, I didn't get into as much as you did, and I could probably learn to like too, right? So, uh, but I think yeah, they live is the the doorway for that. And that's the best way I could put it. So let's spin that wheel again, please. I'm not trying to eat on count here what's on there you go Hoss. let's talk a little bit okay. about some tv man okay um i'm gonna start with i'm just gonna blow this one up here games uh, master games, games okay, master. you gotta tell me a little bit about the games master man because i have okay so believe it or not i did not watch that show back in 92 because we didn't have tv channels that got that back then right even mm-hmm. on i mean well online there wasn't fast enough data to even pull that show on anyway so the thing is like uh i had 2500 baud modem that year so it wasn't gonna do it so uh games master was basically a show in europe that would go over video games it had it was very very weird i mean i have the trailer set up here uh link there but uh I, my first uh introduction to the show believe it or not was just uh, about uh, six or seven years ago actually uh through a buddy of mine and it was basically he was showing me an old video of a ryan hart playing in a tekken 3 tournament wow that was on this TV show, okay, Ryan Hart. Uh, he had actually had a, I think it was a flat top back then. Um, and and so basically he was playing against three other dudes. Or I think it was three other guys that were competing. It was like a four-player, thing, four player, four-way thing. And basically the show, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it, man. <laughs> uh, it's like, I'll just tell you what the show had on it, okay? So you have the tournament. You have chicks that are in bikinis. You have them riding those horse arcade machines while they're wearing bikinis. And then they go back to the tournament. And I'm like, what the fuck am I watching right now? Like, what, what is this? Like, what this, this is like totally like, can you imagine like trying to make a show like that today in the U.S.? Like people would be freaking out. Be like, oh my God, it's totally not PC. It's, it's objectifying women, blah, 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 you know. Of course, right? Of course. But dude, dude, I know it's not, that tournament obviously didn't happen in 92, right? Obviously it didn't. But that's, I would like to show that at some point. When we get to the year uh the, the month of that year i want to show that i want to show that video really really badly 
It's really, really, it's hilarious. It's one of the best, funny, funniest shit I've seen in my life, honestly. It really Who, is. Who's the host? Is that Anthony Daniels, C-3PO, or no? <laughs> it looks like him, right? What is the it? F is that? I know, that little alien thing. I forget what, what his name is. What is that? Fucking, what's it, from Marvel, right? Fucking uh, MODOK. MODOK? Oh, my God, it is MODOK. <laughs> Fucking Modoc. It's bootleg Modoc. <laughs> Discount Modoc. <laughs> budget Modoc. <laughs> oh man, Sonic. Yeah. Dude, all 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 my hours were 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 were, were pumped into this game. Dude, that's crazy. So it was just like a game show, just like they were like it was like a tournament or something, or they they ran tournaments or competitions. I'm just gonna fast well, forward okay, so some of this. As the show, so I I have not watched. Too many episodes, honestly. Oh, but, Power Glove demo. Okay. Yeah, they, they, they go over things like this, but the, the show changed over time. Like, I mean, this you have to understand, Tekken, one, Tekken 3 was out what year? That was like 97-ish, right? Uh-huh. Around there. So, I mean, this is 92. So, in five years, I think the formula might have changed quite a bit, obviously. I don't see women in bikinis here. I don't see um, skimpy clothing, obviously. I would fucking, honestly, give me a fucking Power Glove. Give me a fucking Power Glove right now. I put that shit on. I would wear that shit. Big middle finger to try force for in that shit in public. Make it look bad. He makes the he makes the power glove look like shit. Uh, it should be worn by somebody who can actually pull it off. The power glove is the sickest thing in the goddamn world. It's actually the worst piece of hardware ever. It really is. But it'll help you cheat without cheating in Double Dragon. You know you can get free hearts in that game or level up your hearts without even getting past level one by using the power glove? Yeah. What is this, dude? This is a gaming chair? Sega action chair, dude. They drug that kid or something? Like, seriously? He <laughs> looks like he's drugged, dude. He looks like he's got, like, really fucking, like, like muster like and shit. Dude. Like, hey, kid, we gotta <laughs> sit you still here. Let's keep you chill for this, uh, this, 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 this demo here. This is pretty crazy. It's, it's pretty crazy. Dude, who is this dude? It looks like C-3PO. It totally fucking does. Yeah, Anthony Daniels, right? It looks just <laughs> like him. That's crazy. Maybe it is. Maybe it is Anthony Daniels. Uh, this Modoc guy, though. Yeah, this guy's pretty creepy. Modoc. See, they had that the, the Apple, you know, the the the, the eye cam thing way before eye cam was even a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the stretching face and shit. The, the... Yeah, that shit. Like they had that tech back in '92. Who is this host? He really does look like Anthony Daniels. He does. <laughs> Yeah, it was a gaming TV show, Lucas. Dude, this is crazy. I really want to show you the Tekken 3 one, but it's it's really off topic and it's a different year. It's a way different era, but dude, it's so ridiculous. What when did uh when did this air? Like what day? This is January first, ninety two, or or, or oh, no, sorry, uh, January. No, January. Like, like like what day of the week, or like what channel did you did you catch this on, or like... I, I didn't catch this on. Oh, okay. I didn't find out about the show until uh, two thousand twelve or thirteen. Oh, okay. So it, it was just a, it was just back. a UK show then. It was yeah, it was a European thing. I mean, you'd have to have some sort of satellite programming to be able to see it uh, in the US. That's crazy. Yeah, this guy's this guy's really creepy. Yeah, he's definitely creepy. Let's see what else is going on in this video. Wow, what is this? Oh, this game looks sick. Did they get like a real boxer to do that? Oh, this is this is nuts. Oh shit, is that is that Shinobi? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, that's Shinobi for sure. Oh, I mean Strider. It looks like Strider, right? Oh, it's Strider. It's Strider. I'm sorry. Oh, it's Strider. Strider. Yeah. It's Strider. Uh, for, when you said Shinobi, I was thinking Strider. Yeah, obviously. The way he jumps, like that overdone jump, right? Totally Strider. Dude, I was... Oh, yeah. When I was thinking about this podcast, dude, like... Like, was 90s the best decade for sitcoms? Locus, I'm always crazy. I just don't get out enough to show it. Like, um, like were the 90s the best decade for sitcoms? It was. It was. I think so, dude. So, you know, I I want to kind of blow it up too, dude, so that, you know, I just wanted to get this out of the way so we don't have to talk about it anymore. Fuck Robocop. This Fuck this game. Can I not shoot the hostage? Son of a bitch. <laughs> How many times do you hit that hostage in this game? 
Yeah. Fucking impossible. Like, this game is ridiculous. Anyways, go on. I'm sorry. So, you know, I want to talk about this show, Hoss, because, you know, that way we don't have to talk about it anymore, you know, during uh, during this pot, during this season. Okay. All but, right. But can we get some love for some, for some married with children, dude? Absolutely. I mean. Absolutely. Like, wow. Like, <laughs> I love that show. I love <laughs> that, that show is too. amazing. It's, just, it's so good. Dude. Uh, dude, I, I'm just... I don't know what it was about Married with Children. It was like... It was like you knew that they were going to get screwed after every episode. And it was still like early 90s. So, like, it right, wasn't right. like... So, it wasn't like... I, I think later years it was overrated, Locust, especially when, you know, they started to, like, cheer for the, 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 the actors and then they would have to cut the shows really short and stuff. But, like, er, like late 80s, early 90s, Married with Children, that was that was the heyday, man. That was the heyday. It was. I, I love that show. Uh, Christina Applegate, of course, is the main reason a lot of us used to watch the show probably, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> she looks better as she got older, honestly. She aged really well, uh, at least... For the time. Yeah. Dude. Married with children, man. Dude, how about I mean I know Alf wasn't part of the nineties, right? But dude, Alf was like I was gonna bring, I was gonna put Alf on my list, honestly. Mm-hmm. I didn't really watch it, but I found out recently how it ended. Does anybody know how Alf ends? I know it's off to- off topic, I know. But Alf. How you does, know, you how, know what how, does the end? how does Alf end? Y'all I mean are y'all okay with this, okay? Spoiler mm-hmm. alert for Alf, okay? Oh, Just oh. hand I'm gonna give you guys five seconds to mute it. Okay. So Alf gets taken and they kill him, man. They kill him off. Wow. Alf dies. Wow. They actually ex- they execute him, man. Wow. That sucks, dude. They execute him. He dies. They don't, he doesn't go back home. He dies. He's yeah. supposed to go back home, but they kill him. Wow. Who executes him? I didn't know him? that. The That's gu- why I'm like Mandela Effect City right there. I thought he got away. I thought he made it back. He doesn't make it back. They kill him. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I know, that I sucks. know, dude. I know, I know. I don't, sucks, I, don't right? I don't know how I mean... to continue with the show, dude. That that's pretty crappy. <laughs> that's really crappy, dude. Like... Nobody knows that. Like I seriously, I didn't even know that until like a few, like a month ago or so, two months ago. Wow. I was like, whatever happened with Alf? Looked it up. Like Alf basically gets executed. Wow, wow, wow. That's crazy. Anyways, yeah, that's enough of Alf. But yeah. yeah. Um, but yo, do you do you remember a show? Now. What's up, man? Do you remember a show, Hoss, called uh called Parker Lewis Can't Lose? Dude? Yes, absolutely. Dude, that show was amazing. That was like our Malcolm in the Middle, kind of, right? Yeah. Yep. Sort of, right? Because yeah, like Malcolm in the Middle was like the other the next generation, but like Parker Lewis so. Can't Lose was, like was our dude. So for those of you who don't know, Parker Lewis Can't Lose, it's kind of like a Ferris Bueller kind of show. Like it's it's funny, right? Because remember, Hoss, they tried to didn't they do like a spinoff on NBC, like an actual Ferris Bueller spinoff, and like I that. Think so, but it was like it didn't last long. At yeah, all. and, and like, like I think like... That, I never saw it, but supposedly it got canceled, and Parker Lewis kept on. I think I think Parker Lewis went on for like four or five seasons or something. But um, I think the fact that Ferris Bueller was just trying, it was like oh, trying too hard. I think also, I think that's why it failed. It just wasn't nobody wanted cared for you know. What I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't something I wanted to see in a sitcom, right? I definitely didn't want to see that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you're right. It, it, was, it was a better recipe. It was better because just I think that the different actors, it just worked out better than uh-huh. Ferris worked out by a long shot. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, I don't know. It was just it like, obviously, like that, that big dude. Like, well, let me see if I can get to the IDMB page real here, I think. Uh, is it right here? Yeah. So, here, Parker Lewis can't lose. So yeah, basically it just follows Isn't around a kid from high school, you know, and he gets kind of it's it's narrated by him. It's a it's not like an audience. It's like a it doesn't have like a, a live audience, right? It's kind of like what, what do you call those situational comedies where it's not like where they don't they don't film it in front of an audience? I keep forgetting. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Charles in charge. <laughs> Let's go cycle stuff. <laughs> Fucking Charles in charge. Scott Baer. Wait, so I see the creators. Lou, oh, I thought it said Lou Diamond and Clyde Phillips. I was like, wait, Lou Diamond and Phillips did this shit? Wait, what? No way. I don't know. No, I, I read that wrong. Uh, wait, is that is that Freddy Krueger right there? Was he on that show? Where? Episode Who? three? 
You talking about? No Forge Real Fest? Uh, to that, that had that video list at the bottom. Where? Uh, it was okay. So you had it forwarded. You had gone, maybe go back or forward with the browser. I think you went. It was at the. It was like one of the third option, the third box on the bottom. Oh yeah, it is uh, right here. Lake Placid versus Anaconda. I don't know. Yes. Oh, okay. There it is. Okay, never mind. I thought that was like a clip from that show, but never mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've seen Lake Placid. But like, just the way that Parker Lewis was filmed, right? Like, like the camera angles and like the colors and the characters. It was just a lot of the Saved by the Bell sort of colors, right? A lot of that yeah. stuff. A lot of that same sort of Trapper Keeper sort of art, right? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it, it 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 was really different from like a lot of stuff. It was different, you know. And so I was a big fan of Parker Lewis cameras, you know. Obviously, Fresh Prince, you know, Fresh Prince was good. Doogie um, Hauser, do- Doogie. <laughs> <laughs> dude <laughs> i didn't like doogie hauser man because like thought, he, he honestly, made me he like thought. he made me feel like shit as a kid it's like you know why i put it up i put it up because i hate that show I, I wanted to put it up to hate on it really okay so honestly, why do why do you hate on doogie it. hauser it's just fucking stupid like the whole premise of it like you gotta think about not just the show itself but the people that created the show uh-huh. like how do you come up with the idea that you're gonna have some fucking 12 year old doctor or whatever the fuck year he, how old, he looks like 12 years <laughs> 12 year old doctor working on people and people agreeing with this kid to go forward with things it's just so stupid like i just i had a friend you know what it is i think i hated it so much because my friend used to love that show uh-huh. and i was like i was forced to watch it and i was like man can we just fucking play some like mortal Kombat, or can we play some like you know syndicate or something like that i don't want to watch doogie hauser right now like can we just do something else and it's like no nope, doogie hauser time he had to watch doogie hauser it's like whatever man we'll watch doogie hauser it's fine that might be part of the reason I kind of don't like it, but I think it's just a stupid show. If you just look at it, like, just outside of that box, right? Like, it's just, it's a dumb idea. I don't know how the hell so many people got into it, to be honest. It's really cheesy. And I'm glad that Harold and Kumar made a jokes with it. Like, I'm glad that they made fun of that shit all along. That shit was hilarious. Dude, it made me so insecure watching that show, even as a kid. It's like, I gotta be a doctor now. Yeah, right? right? It's like, damn, I'm, 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 really, behind. I'm, I'm, I'm really behind. <laughs> yeah, I'm really behind. This, this guy is way ahead of us. We gotta get, we're already, it's, we're already, but 12 at the time. It's like, dude, it's too late. We've already, we already lost our lives. Mm-hmm. We're done. We won't have no goals now at this point. Doogie Hauser's done it all. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, I, I just couldn't stand that show. It was, it was really just something I just couldn't really care for. Yeah, um, I got a Fresh Prince clip that I like. It's a pretty good one. I mean, that's a, probably one of the most popular ones. It's probably one people know the show by, uh-huh. but it's... Uh... Uh. Headlines, okay. Oh, we already went through that already, though. We did, we did. Yeah. Let's spin it again. So, by the way, guys, if you haven't noticed, it's just an excuse for me to spin the wheel. I, for some reason, I like... <laughs> like, that. that's my dream, to go on the Wheel of Fortune, Hoss. I would love to go on that TV show, dude. All right, so finally, we've landed on the category that I want us to land on, and that is uh, mixtapes, and which is uh, music. Let me, get that door. Let me close the door real fast. All right, sorry, sure, really man. Let me close Okay. All right. So, what was what was some of the stuff you were listening to in January of '92, Hoss? Lay it on me, man. I mean, the funny thing is, we both had. Uh, well, I mean, of course, like I know the Black Album came out in '91, but like I listened to a lot of like it's, that was my kind of entry to Metallica, I guess. Uh-huh. The Black Album that year, I listened to a lot of it in '92. I probably like that that fall in that spring '91. Uh-huh. You know, fall '91 spring '92. I listened the shit out of that and started opening the doors for me to other things like you know, Bad Motor Fingers released. Uh, pretty recent around that time too. I think it was ninety one as well, maybe ninety two. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one I want to bring, talk about, honestly, for real, mm. is too legit to quit. MC oh Hammer. no! Do you remember that video? Yeah, with the with all the we should, we should watch the, that video. With all the girls, all the women. Let's see if we can bring it up, dude. dude that's just that's just sick. No, actually, we probably shouldn't watch it, honestly. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty pretty hype. I mean, I was a big MC Hammer fan back then. I mean, I, I don't think I got <laughs> really. Yeah, I was huge in MC Hammer, man. I, I was into that shit till like ninety three, I think, and then I was like, okay, this is lame. But yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was cheese. But it was my thing. 
Oh my like you know, God. you had the ice, the ice, the vanilla ice people, and you had the MC Hammer people, and it's kind of like the the battle between SNES and Genesis sort of thing. It was like uh -huh. the two sides, right? Uh -huh. I was leaning more towards MC Hammer than Vanilla Ice. Mm. Now it's the opposite. I think I feel the opposite. I lean more towards Vanilla Ice than MC Hammer if I had to choose. Yeah, dude. Like I didn't have the hammer pants. Yeah. I did not have the hammer pants. Um, but uh, yeah, I did not have them. I did not have them. Dude, to me, Black, it Black was. Album? No, I was, I was, I was twelve, I was eleven when it came out, and I listened to it till I was like maybe. Black Campbell came out in ninety one. Oh yeah, it did. Yeah, 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 man. Like ninety two. Like I, I'm still listening to Metallica, right? I mean, oh, yeah. it's it's just getting started, you know, with Metallica. Um, no, I, I'm old as shit, Lucas. But um, but we would be remiss if we didn't mention, uh, you know, Nirvana. Right and never mind, and, and how that started to kind of climb up the top, you know, the charts, which was yeah, really that, crazy. that was that was probably the biggest uh, part of the change or the wave of change for that era, right? You know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. was the to me, it was that that big of a deal. Like that that album was a big. It opened the door for me to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of types of music and and different ways of life, I guess. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. It was, it was sick. so yeah, I mean, basically, like in '92 is kind of a weird year because it's like, like I was still like, like it was still like, like it was for me, it was still like Metallica and like metal, right? But um, but slowly but surely, right? Like the the all that Seattle music, all the grunge music started to, to filter in. Um, oh yeah. And then, like, on the other side, like, when I was growing up, you were either, like, into, like, R&B or hip-hop. You were part of that group or you were into rock, right? Sorry, you cut out there. Say again. Like, and like, like, oh, like you were either into, like, hip-hop and R&B. Like, that was the crew right there, at least where I grew up. And then you were either that or you were into, like, rock or something like that or metal. See, the thing is, I started off more on the metal side. Uh -huh. And then I eventually got into the gangster rap. And so I then saw both sides of it. And then I like uh -huh. gangster rap and heavy metal. So those are the two choices of music for me in the nine, that, that those years. But, yeah, you're right. It was either one of the two. Like, initially, mm -hmm. I didn't care for any of that rap. I didn't care for any of it. Mm -hmm. I think that was all shit. But what was it and about I, MC Hammer, dude? Like, I, I'm very curious to know I think it was just, why. You know, Why honestly, you are, you're such a big Hammer fan, dude? I think I was just young and stupid. It really doesn't come down to you. I, you know, on it, it's just it's just the the lyrics are so bad now. If you look back, if you actually try to like, I'm not gonna, I don't even. Here, let's, let's, think, let's look at the lyrics. Listen to the lyrics, but it's just uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, what it was it was like just the the, the 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 guy was fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like the dude was like he was explosive on the screen, just like uh, uh, Vanilla Ice was. You know what I mean? Like they were, they could put on a show, right? So the thing is, like, of course it's gonna grip some kid's attention, right? You know what uh -huh. I mean? If you're like a barely in middle school, maybe I think I was like in fifth grade when I first saw both those guys. And then, so like, you know, of course you're like, I mean, 11 years old for God's sakes. You, know, you used to have a little bit of excuse, right? I mean, I, I got out of that shit by that time I was 13. So I mean, uh -huh. that's, I think that's okay. Enough. But right, the thing is like, uh, it was, uh, let's check out these lyrics here. <laughs> oh man. No, dude, look up, look up, look up. Pray. Pray is good. Or, or, uh, <laughs> pray is really bad. Uh -huh. uh, two legit lyrics are pretty bad. Uh, what else? Uh, what's another one? Um, gotta go deeper. Gotta go deeper is one of the worst. One of the worst uh, on MC Hammer album. Where's Epilus right now? Where the where the hell is Epilus? Epilus should be here for this. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, he uh, he'll just say some shit randomly at a tournament, and I'll finish the lyrics for him, and he's like, "What the hell? You know that shit?" I was like, "Yeah, I know all the weird shit. I'm sorry, man." He's our busting out laughing, dying. Oh, dude. But uh. Check out this live performance of Too Legit to Quit from uh, Oh my god, dude. From the Arsenio Hall show. Dude, we we are definitely oh, gonna have Arsenio to talk about Hall. We are definitely gonna have to talk about Arsenio Hall. Absolutely at, at some point this season. Absolutely. <laughs> Look at this. Oh shoot, I forgot to enable that. Shook Knight and Villas, of course. It was yeah, oh, those are Shook Knight's uh, lyrics and Shook Knight's uh oh my I'm not sure god. about the synthesizers and stuff like that and the 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 record or the, the the scratching and stuff, but I know that the lyrics were Suge Knight's. And as far as I knew, that he was still on, he was still marked on Suge Knight's uh, kill list, right? <laughs> just hammer going nuts. Didn't he drop the MC part? Then he just wanted to be called Hammer. Yeah, I just went Hammer. Yeah, so MC <laughs> Hammer for the uh, the first album, and then the Hammer self titled al album with Too Legit to Quit was just uh -huh. Hammer. Yeah, yeah. Dude, seriously, you can dance like this. No matter how bad and cheesy it is, the chicks will go for you, man. Like you, you pull that shit off, you get any chick you want. 
even how how stupid it is. I think that's the reason you, it would probably work. You know, it's just sad that he went bankrupt, like paying so much to each of his dancers, right? You know, I mean, he just blew all of his fucking money so quickly. And then, then, then you know how he eventually had to start working for Death Row, right? Working with Tupac and stuff, right? Yeah. Pumping the bump or pumping the bump, right? Right? It was like not like an MC Hammer type of song or a Hammer type of song. It's pretty crazy. Who would have thought Hammer to Death Row? I, I would never would have imagined that, you know. Who's that? Cisco? Is that Cisco? No, I'm just kidding. Probably Cisco. Yeah. It's not Cisco. Cisco. I don't think it's like Cisco. four feet tall. Cisco, yeah, for sure. I don't know about that. I don't know about Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> Cisco, dude, I noticed that like when we were you know pre- prepping for the show, uh, that we both pointed out Manowar. Dude, yes, absolutely, Manowar. Goddamn right, <laughs> dude. Let's talk a little bit about Manowar, man. What, what yes. are some of your uh, what are some of your uh, memories of Man? Uh, I think it's just the, the 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 type of music that it was. You know, the, what they sang about and stuff like that. It opened the door to like. I think it kind of, even though it was for its time, there was a few things out there like that, right? But like it was kind of ahead, you know. What I mean, now you have all sorts of fantasy metal and all sorts of stuff that sings about that sort of thing. Uh-huh. I think they were like for their for the time that they were out. I feel like they were kind of ahead, you know, of, of that mm-hmm. sort of curve uh-huh. by a long shot. Yeah. I mean, and I like the style better than let's say like you know the newer shit that's all sped up and super high, you know, BPM like Dragon Force and fucking like Blue Trilogy and stuff like that. I like mm-hmm. I like that sort sort of old stuff like War is the World. You know, of course, it's probably one of the most popular ones. That's mm-hmm. the song that everybody probably knows by Man of War if they know anything by Man of War. Um, probably the most played song out of all their tracks, or at least mm-hmm. one of the most top three at least. Um, but that's about it. I mean, it just it was different. You know, I was hyped for them. So so in January. Uh... The, their album the triumph of steel came out <laughs> that album is ridiculous it has it's that ridiculous. like it has that 25 minute song yep. like achilles or something achilles and the agony or whatever it was, that song is yeah, called dude. these guys these guys live in the fantasy world but in the real life <laughs> metal warriors that Mark, was a Mark sick metal. song remember metal warriors dude metal warriors uh warriors of the world warriors right? of the world dude I wish I saw a Man of War concert, dude. That would have been amazing. Are they so still they, touring? nothing to do with the lyrics, really? Oh, oh. shit. Yeah. Then what happened then? Dude, I wonder if... Uh... Oh. Okay. Oh, Biohazard's sick. Biohazard's sick. I wonder if Man of War's still around. I wonder if they still tour. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah crazy it's definitely crazy dude, ma- dude look at this crowd dude imagine oh, wow, being in this concert dude. dude look at that it's crazy that all those people, people are now would be in twitch chat like being low low like uh, gotcha <laughs> base or like fucking what is it keck w keck w keck w uh what was it what, what does it mean when people get excited is it manka s or mankas or what, what is the one where they're like happy they're like right. excited for something what yeah. is that what is that stupid word uh, i forget what it is twitch yeah. chat is fucking stupid okay straight up it's dumb as shit if i could ban those 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 emotes from my channel i'd fucking do it in a second yeah. fucking in a second that's just just dumb but yeah anyways uh dude arena rock was the best dude it was it was the best it was. so uh i think we've come about to that time hoss where we're uh ready to play a little game play some games here absolutely and so uh, one thing we decided uh, is that we really needed to uh, add a segment where we actually play some some video games, man. And oh, yeah. so uh, keeping with the January 1992 uh, theme, uh, we decided we would uh, play a game that came out uh, during that month, an arcade game. Okay. Uh, and so we're going to be playing on RetroArch. And uh, the game we're going to be playing tonight uh, is... Uh, <laughs> This is Captain America and the Avengers, the Data East beat 'em up from 1992. Hoss, Data I have very fond memories of this game, uh, and so we're gonna step away for uh, a few minutes uh, to set up. Uh, but don't go anywhere, guys. We're gonna come back with more Run It Back show with some Captain America and Avengers, and uh, it's a four-player game. Hoss. Yes, it is. It is. So, uh, if you know anyone who has, uh, you know, decent internet, no offense, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, would like the to. Uh, that, 
yeah would like Please to join in definitely it. let us know get in the get in the dis uh get in the uh tell us in the twitch uh and uh we can uh get you in there right away all right guys so we're gonna step away for about five minutes and when we come back captain america and the avengers <laughs> 